there are some high names indeed on that list, Shimon, and we're talking not just about business leaders, of course, but we're also talking about the head of the IMF, Christine Lagarde. We're also talking about the head of the World Bank as well. So this is not a conference that doesn't have attendees, as so much in the Western press would have you imagine. But I'm joined now um, by the co-CEO of Investcor, Hassan Ben Jassim. Hassan, thanks so much for joining us. I want to talk you through what you've seen over the last day or so with your visit here in Bahrain, because obviously you guys are massive investors in this region. You're in global investors, but you've got about a billion and a half, I think, invested in the MENA region. Um, and frankly, when it comes to who's on the ground here, you seem a little bit surprised by how good a crowd they've managed to draw. Yeah. Well, first, Hadi, thank you for having me on your show. Um, uh, it is quite interesting, I think, today. Uh, first, I should say that the, uh, what first surprised me is the, the depth and breadth of uh, international investors who are in this conference today, uh, from Japan, Korea, Singapore, all the way to Europe and the U.S. And I think that is a testament of uh, the, uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain. I'm so grateful for what they have done into putting this conference together. It's effectively to showcase Palestine. And I believe, at least in the sessions I've been this morning, there was a great attribute. There's terrific, a lot of things that could be done in Palestine uh, at many different fronts. And it is terrific for this forum uh, to showcase exactly what could be done in that part of the world to a global investor base who historically or maybe perhaps won't have the chance to learn about Palestine. Well, frankly, who'd never really given it the time of day, I would say, for most of the folks here. And certainly, no, you know, whether they, whether they praise him or not, uh, that does definitely have to do with the son-in-law of the president. Certainly, certainly. And certainly in the backing of of uh, the Gulf states and uh, the United States go a long way uh, when we start to talk about a 50 billion dollar commitment or investment uh, for Palestine that gets a lot of attention uh, not just because of the capital amount itself but also it's a it sends a message of trust and confidence of what Palestine could become in the future as a private investor that is what we like that's what we like to hear and I hope we can play an active role in that journey the sectors that look interesting to you because they're putting a huge emphasis on the healthcare sector, infrastructure development as well, the IT sector, um, and even the most basic needs of these people. So, uh, Palestinian investment is going to, it's a journey. Um, we shouldn't forget that between 2004 and 2014, the Palestinian private sector have deployed close to $30 billion of private projects into the Palestinian territories. That is terrific. That's a good start. Uh, Palestine today is fortunate in a way. Uh, it is uh, within a 1,000 mile radius, you have a 200 million population countries, uh, relatively wealthy. Uh, that could be a good base for trade. Uh, trade agreements and opening of trade with that part of the world is important. First and foremost, I suspect uh, it will have to start with infrastructure. Infrastructure plays a, a very important role, both long term into creating a viable, long term sustainable Palestinian economy, but also in the short term. Infrastructure employs, employs a lot of workers. And that goes a long way into easing a lot of the uh, poverty and the challenges that the Palestinians have today. Yeah, there's no doubt that these opportunities are there, but at the end of the day, it requires some form of leadership uh, to move the dial forward here, doesn't it? And when you have the Israelis and the Palestinians not attending this conference, and you have so many uh, variables within the Palestinians, whether it be Hamas, uh, the Palestinian Authority, all of them very, very negative about the president's plan here and the son-in-law of the president's plan, Jared Kushner's plan. Um, how do you see this really playing out? Because no doubt the opportunities are there, but making them a reality is a bigger question. Hadley, it's a journey. The journey has to start somewhere. Okay. How is that first step? There is no right or wrong answer. Okay, what's very important is we collectively have a collective responsibility to make that right step, okay, that first step. Um, and you believe this is it? Economic prosperity coupled with dignity will ultimately provide peace. I hope that is the path which Palestine will take. Awesome. And it was interesting, I heard uh, Steve Schwartzman last night describing what's happening right now in the Palestinian territories and the opportunity for them to be a, like a Singapore, like a Dubai. But Singapore and Dubai have very, very top-down leadership structures, don't they? And the problem right now with what's happening, the Israeli-Palestinian question, is there is no leadership really on either side. So the, the probably the more relevant uh, case studies uh, have would likely be countries like Rwanda or Serbia or even Vietnam sometime in the past. These are three countries that have had their own political issues and they have come out of them. And that is very promising. And in the case of Rwanda, it's in the last 20 years. This is not generations. So I, hopefully with the right will, with the right uh, both political economic plans in place, there is no reason why Palestine cannot be one of the most thriving uh, regions in the world. I have I've known many, many Palestinians and many of them are good friends. They are some of the most tenacious, uh, hardworking, committed and determined people out there. So I have no doubt 
the 5 million or so Palestinians in Palestine with the right structure, both politically and economically, will truly be a force in the world in the next 50 years. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.